Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon, and today I want to show you how we can take an existing Ubuntu 2004 server and join it to our Active Directory domain that we have set up. So by the time this video is over, we should be able to sign in to our Ubuntu 2004 server with our existing credentials from our Active Directory domain. Now, if you didn't see, we previously went through how to set up a basic Active Directory domain and a domain controller on a Windows 2016 server. There'll be a little card popping up here. I highly recommend going to check that video out before we get started, just so that you know we're all on the same page. Now, the first thing that we need to do is an apt update. So we'll just do sudo apt update. Make sure that we have the current package list there. And I've already done this, so it won't take long at all. Now, there are a few packages that we need to install, and I've already done that ahead of time just to save us some time. So this is a good point to just pause the video real quick, type in this command, just make sure you install all of these necessary packages. I'll talk about them a bit more moving forward as we begin to use them. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is set our Ubuntu server's hostname to match the schema of our Active Directory setup. So we had the conda.local domain previously configured or, you know, whatever you named it is totally fine. So let's go ahead and set the host name. So it's whatever our host name is dot conda dot local. So to do this, let's just do sudo host name CTL uh, set host name. Let's see. There we go. And I'm just going to call this uh, Ubuntu dash one dot conda dot local. Perfect. So now if we just type in host name, we should see that that is our current host name. Perfect. All right, and the next thing we need to do is configure our DNS settings. So, of course, when you are part of a Windows Active Directory domain, you need to be using the same DNS services as the domain. Now, we had the DNS setup running on our domain controller. So, the first thing we're going to do is just um, disable the running resolve conf. So, we'll do sudo systemctl disable systemd-resolve.service. All right. And now we're also going to just hit up and change this disable to stop to make sure that service is stopped as well. Awesome. So now if we just do a status on that service, we should see that that is no longer running because we do not want our local DNS server running on this machine. We want our DNS pointing to our domain controller. So now that we stopped our local DNS service, let's just go ahead and edit our uh, Etsy resolve conf so that we can point our DNS to the domain controller. So we'll go down here, let's take this name server, which is pointing to localhost, and let's change that to the IP address of our domain controller. So in my case, it's 192.168.1.179. All right, and we can just go ahead and save that. So now our DNS is pointing to our domain controller, and we should be ready to go. Now, the next thing we want to do is use the realm command, which is one of the packages we installed earlier, to actually go ahead and join to the Active Directory domain. So realm is basically a tool that can be used to join different Kerberos domains. And in our case, it's going to be an Active Directory domain. Now, it's not very complex to use. So what we're going to do is just do a realm discover. And we're, let's do realm discover and conda.local. So this should be able to see if it is able to reach out and find this conda.local domain. And we can see we get some information here, uh, such as the server software being Active Directory and things like that. So we can see that we can now discover that domain and since we set up those DNS configurations. And so now to join this realm or this Active Directory domain, it's actually fairly simple. All we have to do is do sudo realm join, and we're gonna do a dash capital U for the username. Now this username is going to be the username of a domain administrator on our Active Directory domain. So the same way that when you join a Windows machine to an Active Directory domain, like we did in the previous video with our Windows 10 machine, you need to supply some credentials of a user that is privileged enough to add more machines to the domain. So in our case, it's just gonna be administrator. So now we have sudo realm join dash u administrator. And the last thing we need to specify is the domain that we're wanting to join. So in my case, it's gonna be conda.local. Now we're going to be prompted for the password for administrator. Now keep in mind, this is the Active Directory domain admin account. So the password is the password for that account on our Active Directory domain. So I'll go ahead and enter that. And we should see now that we are able to join that realm and we get no output, which is a little weird, but that should mean that it worked. And to see if it worked, we'll just do realm and list. So this should tell us what the current realm we are part of is. And we can see the realm name is conda.local. Domain name is also conda.local. And the service software is Active Directory. So it looks like we have successfully joined to the realm. But it's not over there. Now, we are part of the Active Directory domain that we wanted to be. 
right? But we haven't set up the authentication modules necessary to allow us to sign in remotely and make home directories and things like that. Part of this realm, we can see that the client software here is set to SSSD. Now, this is the software that we installed earlier with some of the packages that we installed. SSSD stands for the System Security Services Daemon, I think. It's a long one. But basically, this is going to uh, integrate with PAM, which is our Linux authentication module. And this is going to allow us to basically authenticate against a remote source, like our Active Directory domain, and access remote shares and, and things of that nature. So it's going to handle a lot of the basic functionality that we would want when we're integrating with an Active Directory domain. Now, since we have all of that set up, the next thing we want to do is enable the creation of home directories on user login. Since we have accounts that are going to be signing in from the Active Directory domain, there's going to be a lot of new accounts that are going to be able to sign into this machine. So we want to make sure that whenever they sign in for the first time, they have their home directory created. In order to do this, we need to make some changes to our PAM authentication modules. Now, this is a great time to take a snapshot of your machine because if you mess up the PAM configs, you're going to have a really bad time. You're not going to be able to handle any authentication requests so your machine is going to be broken and it's going to be really a pain to fix so please if you're using a vm right now take a snapshot because if it breaks you will be sad with that being said let's go ahead and make the changes to the necessary file which is going to be at user share uh, pam configs and then make home directory all right so basically all we need to change here is the default to yes because we want this enabled and we will up the priority to 900 Perfect. Now, all we should do is just do a right quit here. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's get rid of this session uh, interactive only because we wanted to work on non-interactive sessions as well. And we'll just do a right quit. So now that that is set up, now we need to just re restart PAM so that those changes will take into place. So we'll just do a sudo PAM auth update. Now we can see right here, this new uh, PAM profile that we just created, which is called create home directories on login. Just uh, highlight this little box here, press space so that there's a little asterisk in it so it's enabled, and then hit enter. All right, so now we are actually out of that little GUI window and that uh, PAM profile should now be enabled. Now that we've enabled that PAM profile, let's go ahead and restart SSSD, which again is our client program that is actually doing the remote authentication against the AD domain. So we'll do sudo systemctl restart SSSD, all right, and that's restarted. Let's just do a quick status on that and make sure that it's actually running properly. Perfect, it looks like it is. So now we should be able to grab remote users and authenticate remotely against our Active Directory domain. So let's just test this. Let's just do ID of administrator at conda.local. Awesome. So we can see it assigns it a UID and we can see all the different groups that it is a part of there as well. So it's really cool. We can start to pull users from there. So again, I think another user we had on there was the subscribe at conda.local. Again, if you are not subscribed, go ahead and press that button down below for more content. So we'll do subscribe at conda.local. Awesome. We can see that user is there as well. So these are all different accounts that we can start to access and authenticate with on our Ubuntu machine. So it's very cool. Very, very cool. All right, so we have all the authentication set up. We know that we can start to reach the remote users, but now let's start to allow these users to SSH in and log on to this machine. In order to do that, we're gonna go back to our realm command. We're just gonna do a realm, oh, actually we need sudo here. We'll do sudo realm permit is gonna be the command. Now here you could specify specific users, you could, speci you could specify certain groups, but what we're gonna do is just do an all, right? So you can you can do a little bit of messing around with this uh, on your own if you'd like, just to permit certain groups to access this machine or certain users to access this machine. I'm just gonna allow everybody to access this machine. So now all users from our realm should be able to authenticate here so we can SSH in and things like that. Now, one thing we also wanna do is, for example, we have the domain admins group on our AD domain. Well, we want them to be able to sudo on the box, right? So we'll give them full root control of the box, or maybe you have other groups that you wanna give different permissions. We can do that from our uh, regular Etsy sudoers file. So let's just do a uh, sudo vim slash Etsy. Uh, instead of actually editing the sudoers file directly, let's just create a new file in sudoers.d, and we'll just call this domain admins, right? So We'll create that. Now in here, let's create an entry that's going to allow all domain administrators from our realm to have full pseudo access on this machine. So they'll be able to SSH in and have full control of the machine the same way they would be able to have access in a Windows environment. So in order to do this, we're just going to do a percent to specify a group. 
the group is called domain and then oh let me make sure i spell that correctly domain uh and then we're just gonna do a slash and then a space just so we escape that space character so we'll do domain admins at conda dot local and then we'll just say we want them to uh be able to run all commands so we'll do all equals and then all in parentheses so they can run commands to anybody and all so they can run all commands we'll do a right quit here so now the domain admin should have full sudo on the box they will have to specify their password but they should be able to run commands as root so we should be able to test this now by sshing into our machine all right so in order to ssh in with one of the profiles from our realm let's do ssh and then this is the NetBIOS name of Conda. So we'll do Conda slash, uh, let's try our, let's see, we'll do our subscribe user at uh, localhost. So we are on our Ubuntu machine. We're gonna try to authenticate into our machine with our subscribe user that's part of our Active Directory domain. So let's go ahead and type this in. We'll accept that fingerprint and the password. Let's go ahead and put that in. All right, let's see what happens. Oh. That's actually going to be an error there. My bad. We're going to have to go back up to here. Make sure we have two slashes there. That way we can escape that slash and it acts as one. So there we go. Now we can see that's the correct uh, syntax there. All right. We'll go ahead and put that password in. And look, perfect. We can see that we are logged in as subscribe at conda.local at our uh, Ubuntu One machine. So we can see our ID. And let's see. Let's also do a pwd we can see that it created us a home directory so we are in slash home slash subscribe at conda.local so now we have successfully joined our ubuntu 204 machine to our existing active directory domain and we can authenticate with our ad users via ssh and we have sudo set up for our domain admins now there's many other things you can figure here such as auto mounting of remote shares and things of that nature or maybe some more granular acls through groups it can be a lot of fun to manage through your home lab and experiment with now there was a guide that i used to re-familiarize myself with this concept it's something that i haven't done in a while so i want to give credit to the author of that article i'll post that link down below in the description go ahead and check that out because i pulled a lot of ideas from that article if you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you have questions about any of this stuff or any suggestions for more content, feel free to leave it below in a comment or go ahead and join my Discord server. We just hit 100 members today. It's a very active server and a lot of awesome people are there and willing to help. The link for that is down below in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.